Ranger Kathy Taylor here at Paris Mountain State Park in Greenville, South Carolina. When fifth graders come to the park on a field trip, they are our scientists for the day. And what they find out goes into our records at the park, and I share that information with other scientists. So they're an important part of Paris Mountain State Park. Now, what kind of scientists would they be? Well, we call them ecologists. What's an ecologist? Well, Eco is a Greek word that means home. You hear that in the words ecosystem, ecology, economy, uh, but it means home. So you could say that our fifth graders study the homes of the park and figure out if we have good homes for the animals and plants that live here. You could also say that ecologists look at the relationships between living and non-living parts of a place or biotic and abiotic parts of a place. The fifth graders assess the water quality at Paris Mountain by wading into Mountain Creek and collecting some animals from the creek. That's the biotic part. And we know that some baby insects can only live in healthy water. If the water is polluted, you wouldn't find certain animals here. They couldn't live here. For abiotic parts of the creek, or physical parts, the fifth graders measure temperature of the creek water and pH. And you probably know what temperature is. And so fifth graders, they dip a thermometer into a bucket of creek water, it to be in Celsius, as scientists do. And you might think, what's a good water temperature in terms of water quality? Well, we take the temperature a lot here, and we have certain expectations that with certain air temperatures and seasons of the year, what the water temperature would probably be. So if it's warmer than we think it should be, we suspect the chemicals or pollution are heating up the water somehow temperature anyway? Well, we talk about temperature when we're talking about how hot or cold a day will be or someone has a fever or not, but what is it? Well, we know it's a measurement of the amount of energy in an object. We could also say we use temperature to get a measurement of how hot or cold something is. So it measures the amount of energy in an object. We know on a thermometer, like the ones that the students use here, that there's a red liquid there. And since we know heat causes things to expand and cold causes things to contract, well, it turns out that the little red line goes up, rises as it expands with heat and contracts or goes down, the line goes down with cold. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? We're gonna measure temperature inside. This is inside the Park Center lab at Paris Mountain State Park. And we're going to be thinking about what could change the temperature of water. What could change the temperature of water? Hmm. Well, you might be thinking of some possibilities. Pollution, generally saying the time of year. Uh, how about the amount of sunlight? Let's think like scientists and make some predictions about what we think will happen with our beakers of water. If we put the beaker, well, one beaker in a sunny spot, one in a shady spot, one in normal room lighting. What do we think will happen? We can use what we already know ourselves, what we've experienced to help answer this one pretty easily. If you stand in a sunny spot, you expect to get warmer, right? Or even hot. If you stand in a shady spot, you expect to cool off, right? So we might say, if we warm up in a sunny spot, will the uh, temperature of this water warm up as well? That's a way of phrasing questions to help you make a hypothesis. Now, I've come up with a hypothesis. We know that hypothesis is an educated guess that can be tested. So let's see if uh, this hypothesis statement that I have on a sheet that we'll be using some today, uh, the amount of sunlight will affect the temperature of the water. Is that basically what we're saying? We could say it in a longer form of what we expect to happen, but the amount of sunlight will affect the temperature of the water. So is that something that can be tested? Yes, and when we place thermometers in each of our beakers, one in a shady spot, one in a sunny spot, one in a normal room lighting spot, we will find out if the temperature changes. So we can actually test that, right? I'm going to pour some water into some beakers 
and scientists like to be exact about these things. So I'm going to put 100 milliliters of water in each beaker. The beakers are all 250 milliliter beakers. I've marked a little spot for 100 milliliters to make it easier for me to pour. So what else do we need? We have thermometers and we have our beakers of water. Now we need our locations with or without sunlight, right? So we have sunlight coming in through a window. I think you can still see that if I move it into the sun. And we have a shaded spot that I need with the box. And we have an area that's just normal room lighting. So we need to let these sit. Why is that? Well, we know that water temperature should, since this was just tap water, water temperature right now should be the same for all three beakers. But we'll give it 10 minutes. I have a timer. We'll use 10 minutes for it to maybe settle into its area. And we'll see if the temperature changes as a result. Let's talk about variables. Normally there is a dependent variable, an independent variable, and a controlled variable. So which is which in our experiment? We have beakers of water and each has the same amount of water. So which variable would that be? The controlled variable where it's the same throughout. So which of the other variables in our experiment depend on the other? Which are we expecting to change because of the other? When we put it that way, maybe it becomes clear that the temperature is dependent on the independent variable. So the temperature is dependent on what is the independent variable here? We could say the amount of sunlight based on the locations of the beaker. So the temperature we have predicted will uh, change based on the amount of sunlight. We got it. Well, it's been 10 minutes, so it's time to put our thermometers in each of the beakers. Then I'm going to set my timer for two minutes. Why is that? Well, we need to get the thermometer time to change if it's going to based on the location. And uh, you've probably had a thermometer used on you and depending on the thermometer, it takes various amounts of time for the thermometer to read the temperature. So we'll give it two minutes. What number would you say the red line goes up to? Below the 20, would you say three below the 20 even? How about 17? So for the shaded area, I'm going to write 17 degrees Celsius. Can you see where the red line goes up to? Looks like it's right around, that's right, 20 the direct sunlight area, the sunny area, I'm going to write 20 degrees Celsius. What number would you say the red line goes up to? It's below the 20, maybe two below? Would you say it's at 18 degrees Celsius? For the beaker that was under normal room lighting, I'm going to say 18 degrees Celsius. If you're using the sheet that I'm using, it says at the bottom of the sheet, draw a line graph with temperature in one axis and sample areas like dark, direct sunlight, normal, on the other axis. And to label which is the independent variable, which is the dependent variable. And so I'm going to start by making line graph with a y-axis, that's vertical, and an x-axis, okay, so let's look at which is y and which is x. Usually the dependent variable is the y-axis. And what do we say is our dependent variable? 
it was the temperature, right? So I know we have 17, 20, and 18. I'll make some lines here for temperature. And I don't know, let's say we'll start with 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, 21, that's fine. And um, we know that um, this is the temperature in degrees Celsius. That's pretty important, really, when you think about it. All right, and that is the dependent variable. All right, so we said the independent variable is the amount of sunlight. So we're going to say amount of sunlight independent variable. And for that, we have dark shaded area and sunny and normal lighting. So, well, I guess I really need to go ahead and make these lines. I'm not using a ruler to do this, but we are doing a line graph, so I'm starting to think maybe a barber graph would have been good. But we're gonna do a line graph. And now we just plug them in, right? So what do we get for the uh, dark shaded area with our beaker of water? We got 17 degrees Celsius, right? For, so for dark shaded, I'm gonna make a little circle there. And for the sunny area, what did we get? We got 20, right? So I'm gonna put sunny, 20 there. And then for normal lighting, what did we get? That's right, 18. So I'm gonna, since we're doing a line graph, I'll make it a line. And what can we conclude from this? Well, apparently the temperature did go up in the sunny area with more sunlight. So what does that say about our hypothesis that the amount of sunlight will affect the temperature of water? Is it true? So why is temperature important to scientists? Well, we know that areas with warmer temperatures, but not real hot, not real cold extremes, host a wild variety of life. Think of a rainforest. So many animals and plants can live there. And we know that every animal and plant and living thing can handle a certain range of temperature that varies with the animals. So the animals that live around where we live in South Carolina are used, depending on where they are, to a certain range of temperatures. If it gets warmer than that range of temperatures or colder than that range of temperatures, that um, causes some animals to maybe not be able to live in a place anymore. So we know also that certain factors that cause temperature to change can be uh, something we should pay attention to. At Ferris Mountain State Park, we have a forest around the water. Compare that to a parking lot or roadway on a hot summer day when it rains and that rain warms up on the pavement and then it flows down into a creek nearby causing the creek water to heat up. That can cause some animals to quickly die. When students measure the temperature of the water at Mountain Creek, they know that chemicals or pollution can heat up water. So if the water is warmer than we think it should be, maybe especially if it got colder outside in the air temperature, but the water temperature went up, we might suspect the chemicals or pollution were heating up the water unnaturally. Well, we've been measuring temperature, 
and there's a good chance you already knew how to do that before we started today. But we were also practicing being scientists. That's an important skill to have. Maybe one day you'll become a scientist, but you can always think like a scientist, getting to know how our world works and helping to protect it. Scientists do need to find out about how a place works. Ecologists in particular look at these living and non-living parts of a place and how they interact together. And the more we know about the way our world works, the better we can take care of it, the better we can appreciate it uh, and enjoy being in the great outdoors.